and banditry in the northwestern states of Zamfara, Kaduna, and Kasna states has reached an alarming height in recent years. Bandits continue to terrorize villages with impunity. In fact, they have actually settled in some of the northwest states, setting up fortified enclaves in the hinterland and on the frontiers from where they plot and carry out their operations. And the incidents and the prevalence of armed banditry and its associated threats to human security in the northwest region of Nigeria is becoming a subject of national security and public concern. Comrade Okoye Waguma, mm. may I ask you, why is this prevalent increasing at this point in time? Well, um, what, what we are seeing now is not uh, anything new. Uh, on the contrary, it's just an, uh, you know, an ex escalation of a, uh, an already bad situation. Um, there are some things that have happened recent, in recent times that will uh, clearly tell you that the government has completely lost control and this government is not capable of providing safety and security in this country. The first one is, um, of course, just yesterday, you listening to the news, um, the, um, the sort of Sokoto, Exactly. You know, uh, did say that uh, the entire north has been overrun. Exactly. So if this is uh, if this is coming from the uh, the spiritual leader of a man you could describe as a spiritual leader of the north, I don't know what what other evidence you need to let, know let, that the government has. Let me quickly take you up on that because he, he actually <laughs> condemned the incessant killings by bandits in the northern part of the country. Uh, as a matter of fact, he said that. Bandits now went into houses to kidnap people. And he's asking the federal government and the state governments to wake up to their responsibilities of protecting the lives and property of Nigerians. I mean, if a whole sultan of Sokoto, Alaji Basad Abubakar the third, could actually state this, what tell, what's the situation in the north for the common uh, people? Yeah, but this is the, the point I'm making, that there is no government anymore in the north. Uh, just again, as I was talking about the Sultan ma making these comments, a, 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 a first class emir was also assassinated by bandits. I think it was in Nasawa or Adamawa or so, in one of the states. And um, recently also, you know, you know that the American government sent in operatives who came all the way from America to come and rescue an American who was kidnapped in the north. So um, our, our organization will be monitoring the enforcement of the COVID, you know, um, you know um, measures across the country. And Kaduna, Kaduna State is one of our states. Our monitors are not able to even go out to monitor. Of course, you know what has been going on in Kaduna State. In spite of a curfew that started in March, more killings have continued to happen. Um, security... Uh, People, communities will call on security agencies to come and intervene. They will not come. But when they protest against the escalating insecurity, in, in the same security agencies will arrest them. You know? So it clearly, the state is not there for the people. The state is actually against the people. The security agencies that are set up to protect the citizens are being used to harass and intimidate the people. And that is what we see. Today, when you call any anywhere, you call the police, that's a situation, you call the police, they tell you they are not working. But when protesters are out there to demand good good, good governance, the same security agencies come out to arrest them, you know, uh, charge them to court on frivolous allegations. So on the one hand, the government has failed, security agencies are not able to provide security, but they have the capacity to continue to torment the, the, the people. So for me, it's a paradox, and I think that there is no government. And the primary purpose of government, and this, this everyone knows, is security and welfare. This government has failed on both scores. And when that has ha happened, you don't need to, to, to gaze as to what should happen. The government should give way. So and that is, this is why you hear people start talking about system change, re regime change. People are justified to make such demands because government has totally failed. Now, the defense headquarters had said that the menace of uh, banditry and insurgency will soon come to an end, even though no timeline 
for the defeat of insurgents uh, were given. And uh, they actually for, they talked about following up uh, the stepping up of both kinetic and non-kinetic operation, adding that the various operations against the criminals have continued to progress, so to say, satisfactorily. This was a statement made by Major General John NNJ, the coordinator uh, defense media operations. Uh, one begins to wonder that despite the army operations, uh, several army operations that have been launched, most of these have been largely ineffective. Why is the Nigeria army continue to struggle to contain and banditry and insurgency and violence in the north? You see, the, the, this is not the first time we hear the military make uh, promises that this is will end and they come up with uh, Jargons and high-sounding high words, uh, kinetic and not kinetic. It's an attempt to bamboozle the people with um, mean with meaningless words. In Kadu, in Kaduna State, a top military commander said openly, I was quoted in the media that they need they need equipment, they need support, resources to be able to meet, you know, uh, the the sophistication of the the bandits. The, clearly, you know, this is the, well. One of the few attempts at getting close to to uh, to to accepting that they they don't have the 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 the, 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 the you know the, the capacity to deal with these problems, and you see the the thing about military making promises is neither here nor there because we have had them say they had uh, the, at different times they said they had degraded Boko Haram and they keep. Degrading them, and the more they degrade, the more people keep, you know, uh, occupying the, the the space. You 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 see the the, the thing about about um, if it, 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 it's clear, it's clear, it's clear that it, when when you hear junior military officers come out on video to say certain things. Things about corruption in the military. Things about uh, the military should not allow themselves to, to be to be used to kill and such protesters. Things about uh, you know how how junior officers are, are sent to the the, the the battlefields without being armed. How their entitlements are not being paid. You know, and what happens is that military authorities arrest these young officers. Today we don't know what has happened to the officer who was on video. I know Sarah Potas has been following up that story. Who, who was taken into custody because he made a video talk, talking about corruption and uh, how you know junior officers are not being well treated. This is what we we get. Every now and then they come out and tell us uh, they, they will soon degrade. And when they, we have been hearing the same story, we want to hear something new and we want to see things happen. Now, a, rep a recent report by the Global Terrorism Index has ranked Nigeria the third most terrorized country in the world for the sixth consecutive time. Uh, yeah. wherein continued attacks by insurgents have already displaced more than 2 million people and caused further 240,000 Nigerian refugees to flee to neighboring countries. Uh, doesn't it look like the Nigerian security forces are running, uh, I mean, are not winning the war of battle at this point in time? And what should be done to effectively tackle the menace of banditry uh, and insurgency this time? I, I, I think that in the first place, I, I, you can predict the response of the government to this re report. But I, I, when it is convenient, they will invite you to come and support, you know. But when they come up with these, these reports, they tell you it's not their business. Now, I think that what is needed is sincerity on the part of government. Government should come out sincerely to say that we need help. And you see, again, it also has to do with how do the people relate with the government? The people have completely lost confidence in government. And without public confidence, without public trust, without public support, in fact, without legitimacy, because this government has lost the legitimacy, there's nothing in this in this, anything this government can do. Because the truth is that, on the one hand, they do not want to accept that they have failed and that they, they, they need help. But at the same time, they keep telling you, we will soon, we will soon, we will soon. And we keep hearing, we will soon. And things keep getting worse and worse. I think what is needed is for government to co come out clean, you know, begin to renew, you know, begin to, you know, rebuild confidence, come out frankly and say these are the areas of need. So that citizens can understand the, I mean, there could be challenges, yes, but when people don't even trust government, when people can't even trust government, it's difficult for them to believe that this is not 
they, you know, they deliberate. But government has to be sincere in terms of addressing the corruption within the, the military that has led to diversion of resources meant for fighting, you know, insecurity in, in, in this country. And also to seek assistance from elsewhere. It, it, like I told you, America had to come in to rescue their own citizens. That, tell, that tells a lot. That, that tells a lot. So government needs to be sincere. One, public confidence, public trust, government needs legitimacy. This government is illegitimate. And this is why no legitimate government can achieve anything. The, uh, the best illegitimate government can do is to resort to repression. To, to sustain this illegitimate uh, you know, existence. That is what is happening. Thank you so much for your insightful analysis.